All right, welcome back to Fusion Friday. This week, what we're going to do is we are going to model out a basic slider and crank mechanism. This is a very common mechanism in engineering, and what it does is it translates rotational motion into linear or translational motion in a slider. So what we're going to do is we're going to model out all these components in Fusion 360 and go through the process of applying the proper joints so that we can visualize this motion. So let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to design out is my crank. So I'm just going to create a new sketch and draw out the circles. I'm going to start with my largest outer diameter of 75 and then I'm going to create a path where my rod will connect to. I'm going to make the path have a diameter of 70 and then I will assign that to be a construction line. So last thing I want to do is I want to just add the circle where the connecting rod will latch into it and the circle for the center. So the circle for the center, just make that five and the circle for the connecting rod. Now a good practice that you want to do whenever you're designing a slider and crank mechanism is you need to make sure that your connecting rod is always longer than the diameter of your circle. So I'm just going to start by designing this with the connecting rod latch off to the left so I can make sure that my connecting rod is definitely far enough away. Last thing I have to do is just add my constraint. Okay, now I've got a fully constrained sketch that I can go ahead and start to extrude. So why don't I do that? I'll bring this out to five and I'll make this a new component. And then I'll just extrude that last little bit for my sketch. And I'll extrude that out 10. And there's that. Okay, next thing that I wanna do is start to add my connecting rod. So I'll create a new sketch just on the face of our wheel there. And to do this, I can create just a very easy slot. So if I use the slot tool, I can first of all project this little notch where it falls into and then create my slot around it. Okay, so I want the two centers for my circles to be 100 millimeters apart and then I want these to have a thickness or a diameter of the circles to be 10. So I'll go ahead and extrude that and then I will just fix the constraints to be 100. And finally, just add the little pin on the end for the slider to attach to. So now we see that we, at our maximum position, our connecting rod will not interfere with the crank, which is exactly what we want when we're designing something like this. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish the sketch and then we can extrude this out to Go ahead and extrude it out five, and we want to make this also a new component. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rename my components just so I can keep track of them. I'll call this crank, and I'll call this my connecting rod. Great. All right, now what I wanna do is create the slider. So on this same face, as my um, crank, I'm just gonna create my third sketch. And now what I wanna do is add in the slider. Okay, so the slider itself, and again, I'm just gonna reference the things that I already have. So I'll start with my 20 by 50 rectangle and then I will position that rectangle around this already existing circle. So I will Go ahead and add my dimensions to put this halfway in between and then oops, excuse me halfway in between and then about five millimeters or excuse me 10 millimeters from the edge there perfect so this looks great now we can go ahead and finish our sketch and we can extrude this out so i'm going to start by just extruding out the back and I will make this, I wanna push this one back 20 so I keep it in the correct orientation and I will make it a join operation. No, I will make it a new component. 
Perfect. I'll hide my connecting rod for a second just to get that last extrusion in so it doesn't join with the other body, but I'll extrude this out by five so that it joins to that, but not to my connecting rod. And then I have my slider all set and done. Last thing I need to model out is the base. So I'm actually gonna start by looking at the back side of this model and create a sketch along that back face there. Okay, starting from, again, the little point that's referenced, I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle. So I'll just draw out a big rectangle to start and then I'll come back in and add the dimensions in as necessary. So my longest dimension, this is 210 millimeters. I want the distance between there and the right edge of that to be 30. And I want this to be exactly centered in my rectangle, but I should add the thickness before I define that. So the thickness of my rectangle is 30, and then the halfway mark would then be 15. Okay, now we've got a almost fully defined sketch. The last thing that we need to do is add the little slot for the slider to run through. So we'll just draw out that rectangle. And this is 20 millimeters thick with five millimeters between the wall. And it is 142 and a half meters long. And we'll see that that actually makes it tangent with the uh, crank that we have. So that's all the sketch that we need to do and then we could go ahead and extrude our final body. So to do this, I'll do this in a couple different steps. I will first just extrude out my base to um, the 20 that is required to be, and I will create a new component from that. Um, and I also just wanna make sure that I get the center along the back there as I create my new component be good there and then last thing I want to do is just add in ooh, it seems I've accidentally cut through one of my one of my features here there we go and now if I hide the connecting rod yes okay so I must have missed that middle portion but that's okay so we'll come back around and we'll now hide the connecting rod actually. And we will also hide the crank and then we will just extrude out that last little bit of our sketch. And I'm gonna push that back five it seems. Join it to the body that exists and then we are good. Now we have all of our components fully modeled out. And now we can start going ahead and adding in the relationships required. For the first relationship, I want to connect my, um, well, first thing I actually want to do is right now my crank is the parent body. So I'm going to go ahead and unground that and rename my base and then ground this one. Okay, that fixes this base in place. So that way all of our joints can operate off of that fixed base. So now what we can go ahead and do is first thing I'm going to do is connect the crank to our base. So I'll go ahead and start with a joint along the crank and then just click again at around the same spot for the crank. So I want to assign a revolute joint to that. So that way now this will rotate around that point. This is my axis that I created, okay? And now we can see that that rotates as required. But I don't want to rotate it just yet, so I'm going to put it back at zero degrees. All right, I'm going to re-reveal my connecting rod and then apply a revolute joint also at this end from this rod to the crank. So I'll go ahead and do that. Click on the crank, and then click on the rod there, and then that also revolutes, and I'll click OK. Next thing I want to do is I want to add my slider joint into the um, slider and the base. And when I apply the joint, what it's going to do is it's actually going to move it based on um, the positioning of it right now. So I'll probably have to move it back a little bit just to get it in a position that I like to work with. So I'll just click on the top of my slider and the bottom of my base. And yeah, you'll see it moves. 
and I want to go back into my motion and change this to be a slider joint and I want it to slide along the x-axis there so I want this to move along my x-axis so I will click OK and then actually before I click OK last thing I want to do is just move it back to its rough position so that looks like it moved about 30 millimeters maybe 29 and then it moved back a little bit as well and that doesn't quite look centered so this is going to be a little bit of a negative 28.75 it looks like yeah that looks good okay so now we've got our thing back in the relative position and it can slide as we can see and it doesn't move up or down but I don't want to do that just yet last joint I want to apply is a cylindrical joint between here and the slider that way the connecting rod can move in addition to the slider while also being able to rotate so I'll go ahead and do that by clicking on my joint and going to cylindrical and this one is going to be a little trickier to apply but what you have to do is hide the slider and then make sure that when you apply the joint you are applying it to this kind of inside cylinder you see how you can um, highlight the entire cylinder of the connecting rod there where the hole is you want to make sure that you click that as your first point and then the uh, the little front of the peg for the slider so we want that to be a cylindrical joint along the z-axis and then we are good to go so now if we model out our thing we see that we have a fully functioning slider and crank mechanism and that's the basics of it so I'm just gonna go ahead and add add in my features I'll just make this um, we'll go gray blue green and white sure so now we've got our fully operational slider and crank mechanism all modeled out in Fusion 360.